everyone, it's Nicole. Today I'm here to give recommendations of books that I think are better read in the fall and that also have queer women in them. It is sort of an answer video to the video that I've done a year ago that was titled Summer Reads for Queer Ladies, in which I talked about books that are a summary and that include queer women as well. That video blew up quickly and I think at that point it was the most commented and the most viewed video on my channel. Which tells me one thing. People are thirsty for or books with queer women in them, and I only aim to please. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump into this video. I personally always believe that for the fall the best genres are horrors, which I don't read at all because I'm a scaredy cat, historical fiction, because historical fiction is always better read in colder month, fairy tale retellings, because they go well with cold weather as well, memoirs and books that are alike memoirs, mostly serious memoirs that talk about very traumatic topics sometimes, and also books that are written in somewhat of a diary form. That's what this collection is going to be all about. The first book that I want to mention is Ash by Melinda Law, which is a queer retelling of Cinderella. Not a lot of people seem to know about it, and I personally love this book more than some of the books Melinda Law wrote. I love her adaptation series, but it's very typical young adult. This one gives you space to slowly fall in love with the book, to fall in love with the atmosphere, because the atmosphere is perfectly fairy tale-ish. It's a darker type of fairy tale, but Cinderella is not very cheerful fairy tale if we think about it. What comes before Cinderella meeting her prince in the story is pretty depressing. And in this book, I think before our character meets the other character, I'm not going to spoil who it's going to be, but it's obviously going to be a queer romance at some point, is actually painted in all the dark colors and tones, and I think it's very fitting for this fairy tale especially. So I really, really enjoyed it, and I thought it was a great retelling because it stood on its own and also addressed some stereotypes some of the fairy tale retellings cannot, for some reason, move forward from. So because of the bleakness of the first half of the book and because of its fairy tale roots, I really recommend to read it in the fall. The next one is actually the one that I was sent by a publisher and I didn't know if I'm going to like it and I said up front in my email that there is an opportunity that I'm not going to like it or that I won't find anything to talk about in terms of this novel, but I actually really enjoyed it and I think I read it in two days, which for me now is a record because I read very slowly because I don't have a lot of time. I somehow found it for this book. Anyway, it's just Juliet by Charlotte Regan. It's a contemporary romance novel that I think starts in the fall because it starts with the rain and that's why I think I associate it with the fall. But it takes its time and it talks about all seasons because it's the story that follows our protagonist throughout the whole year. She doesn't live in a very exciting town and she's not very popular but she has a few friends and a boyfriend. So she's alright. But one time when she comes to school she sees someone new, a girl that just transferred to their school. And obviously by knowing that the genre is romance, you realize that they get friendly and then at some point they start dating. It's about our protagonist realizing that she's bisexual. The word bisexual actually was included a lot in the book, which made me teary-eyed. I was very proud of this book because it didn't forget the word bisexual. And even more, I love the scenes where people try to pigeonhole the protagonist in to being a lesbian or straight and she told them up front that she's neither and that she's bisexual. I also love the romance because I thought it was pretty cute and realistic. In some sort of way it reminded me of Love Rosie, but the queer version of Love Rosie. Obviously the protagonist doesn't get pregnant because, you know, two ladies, but it takes them a lot to get together. So in this sort of way it does remind me of Love Rosie. Now it's time for two new adult books. And the first book is gonna be Come Girl by Leah Rader, now Elliot Wake. This book I loved it. It's thrillery, it's mysterious, it's dark, it talks about a lot of dark topics. Our protagonist is bisexual, yay for that, and she got in a car crash with her girlfriend, in which the other participant of the incident died. She herself lost the ability to fully control her hand, and she was an artist, so she doesn't know what to do, she's confused, she obviously cannot create anything anymore. And after a huge fight with the girlfriend and her family, she runs off, she tries to build a life on her own, and on one party she bumps into a couple that offer her a job 
as a cam girl, which I'm further in time where she's already popular and one client constantly wants to talk to her about non-work related things. She grows attached to him and she wants to know his identity. Also a father of the victim that died in that car crash is constantly haunting the protagonist and wants to know what actually happened in this car crash. It's all a big mystery. I love this book. But it talks a lot about very dark topics such as sex work and asphyxiation and very uncomfortable fetishes. So if you're very icky about that, I wouldn't read this book. But it is just mind-blowing in my opinion. I loved it to bits. The next book is You Set Me on Fire by Marika Tamaki. Marika Tamaki is known for writing graphic novels as well, so you probably heard her name. And she also wrote prose, and that's why I was interested in it. Basically, she tells the story of a girl that was burned a couple of times by her own stupidity, to be honest, and has a lot of scars, she's very self-conscious about it, and she goes to college where she falls for a straight girl. It's a typical story, we've all been there, except for me, because because I'm not digging straight girls, but it tells the story of a college experience in a very interesting and unique way, so I was very grossed in the book and I couldn't put it down. Also, some of the books have the same plot. It has unique details that will keep you interested. Finally, we came to the point where I'm going to talk about adult books, and the first one is going to be Kissing the Witch by Emma Donoghue. We're starting with fairy tale retellings. It's one of the best collection of fairy tale retellings that I've ever read. I didn't read a lot of them, but it's still the best. The stories are very short and in the end of every story the protagonist of this particular one asks the other participant what their story is like. The book moves very fast and the way Emma Donoghue looks at these fairy tales is very different and unique, which I loved because I always love when Order takes a fairy tale, looks at its construction, sees what can be done differently and does it. It's also a great commentary on fairy tales from feminist and especially queer feminist point of view. The next one I'm not sure about the age group actually. It could be new adult easily. It tells the story of a girl named Flannery that goes to college and that falls in love with her professor. The woman is very young and they have a connection. The story is told from uh, Flannery's point of view. who's quite naive, provincial. She doesn't know a lot about the life in a big city. So it's very interesting from this part as well. But the relationship is described so well. I was very engrossed in the book. I think even though it has a bittersweet aftertaste, it is very sort of memoir-like. Blue is the Warmest Color by Julie Moreau. I know, everyone is aware about this graphic novel and everyone is aware how it ends. But still, I believe you have to give it a read, because the graphics are beautiful and very bleak. It reminds you of autumn. There are two types of coloring in this book. It's mostly cold blue or gray. I love the way it was done, I love the way it was constructed, and I also love the story and I cried in the end. I'm not very emotional, so, you know, it was good. I'm not going to talk more about it, because you probably know what it is about. It's just a girl meeting another girl, realizing that she's gay and struggling to fit in in their society. A very usual type of plot that a lot of queer people can relate to. The last one is Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit by Janet Winterson. I stayed away from this book for a very long time because I was afraid that it's going to be preachy. It's about religion and it's about a religious protagonist who is realizing she's a lesbian. I loved it so freaking much. At this point it's one of my favorite books and it's very tiny, it's short, but it tells the story well. It's about a girl that lives in a religious household and not just casual religious but, but people that are actually invested in all church activities. It's a small town, the protagonist doesn't know any better, so she follows her mother in this path and one time in church she meets a girl that she finds herself attracted to. They establish a connection which alarms the mother of the protagonist and steers problems their relationship. It is very realistic, in my opinion, especially the end of the novel. It's not very dramatic, but it's not extremely positive either. That's all the books that I wanted to recommend. I hope you'll find something to your fancy. If you know any other books with queer women that will be great for fall, write them down below. I'm going to wait for these recommendations. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye!